Wednesday here on the Locked On NFL Podcast. It's Chris Carter and James Rapine. We're going to go over this cornerback class. Cooper DeGene is set to run next week at the Iowa Pro Day, and everyone's going to be looking at that. Where does he rank among this year's corners? But we'll talk about that and a lot more here on the Locked On NFL Podcast. You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. We are your hosts, Chris Carter and James Rapine of Locked On Steelers and Locked On Bengals. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. And as always, this show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. More on them later. James, my buddy, we got... Cooper DeGene ready to run next week. And that was a big thing that didn't happen at the Combine. Of course, he's coming off uh, you know, a rough injury this past season. But now he's set to go, and everyone's looking at him and excited to see how well does this, does this guy test because – there, uh, it's a very interesting cornerback class, a talented cornerback class. I'd say I wouldn't say top heavy because I think they got some good depth there too. But <laughs> literally today, I believe Pro Football Focus, you know, their their big board and how they rank guys, they moved DeGene up into their number one spot over Quinion Mitchell. And <laughs> there are some who speculate: is Cooper DeGene the best option at corner? And and some people wonder. You know, is he more of a safety? Guys like Jordan Reed at ESPN see him as more of that because he can flex between positions. Where do you see Cooper DeGene in this year's cornerback class? I think he could be as high as number one. And the key, there are two keys. First of which, and you mentioned the pro day. He needs to crush the pro day. Yes. Because part of why people have him, in, in PFF, for example, has him as their top defensive back is pretty simple. They think he's a freak. And he needs to go test like an athletic freak. And if he does that, well, then I could certainly see, if you look down the, the line in a few years, of Cooper DeGene being the best cornerback in this class, the best defensive back, whatever you want to say, whether he plays safety right. in a weak safety class or plays corner in what I think is a pretty deep and, and quality cornerback class. But the key is fit. And I think finding the right fit for him, because he's able to do so much, because I'm assuming his athletic gifts are going to shine through from a, a testing standpoint. And so if that happens, wherever he lands, and we see this every year, these super athletic players that have a lot of potential, and then they go to a bad landing spot, and the defensive coordinator doesn't know how to use him, and then they don't maximize him. If he goes to a place that says, all right, we're going to put you in zone coverage, you're going to be a zone corner where you – Read, react to all of those things. You can play safety some. Not that he can't play man-to-man, but I just think that that's what Justin Reed and others project from him. I think he could be really, really darn good. And you look at his size. I mean, 6'1", 207. I mean, he's not this lean corner. He's not Nate Wiggins, who weighs less than me at like 180. He he weighs 200-plus, and if he tests well, I think he's going to be right there among the top corners in this class. Absolutely. That's a big part of the questions here is right now, where does he test? Because the size is really interesting to, to, to look at there when you look at how uh, at, at how he compares. Like, for example, Wiggins, you know, he he's a lighter guy, but like Quinion Mitchell, who, you know, some look at as the best cornerback in this class. You know, he's just over six foot. And he weighs 195 and he's a bit sturdier. Like when we talk, when we talked to him at the podium at the combine, you could tell, like, oh no, that guy, this guy's built. Like he's got he's got muscle behind him. He you can't just bully him off the line. Uh and, and you know, he has a few other strengths that Nate that uh that that, that Nate doesn't, Nate Wiggins doesn't. But you look at Cooper DeGene, at least what he's listed at uh what he's listed at the combine as he he was also just a little over six foot. Uh, you know, he was listed at 203. So mm-hmm. That's uh that, that you know he's a, he's a little bit more sturdy on him now. Granted, like his he, the bench press was the one thing he did, and that way he, he did sixteen reps to Mitchell's twenty. Uh, but still, if he runs, if he runs like like Quinn Mitchell ran a four point three three, that's ridiculous. If it is, if if, if uh, Dejean is in that class, if he's if he's four four below four four in the four threes, 
he's going to skyrocket up everyone's boards. And, and I also think, you know, the jumps could help as well. You know, having a good vertical, having a good broad, you know, if he does a shuttle, I think actually a shuttle would be very interesting for him considering people want him, might want him to be more flexible in the secondary. Uh, but still, I think that that's where things could get really interesting for this cornerback class. And, and it continues to change because if I remember correctly, going into uh, the draft process, like, you know, at the end of the regular season, I know the draft process really starts before that, but the end of the regular season for football, when I start looking at the draft a little bit closer, um, you know, guys are talking about Terry and Arnold being the number one corner of this class. And it was Arnold and McKinstry that were at the top. And now it's DeGene and Mitchell at the top with Arnold third, then Wiggins, then McKinstry, as far as like the top guys who are considered the first round picks here. What about where do you place the Alabama guys? Are, are we overlooking Arnold because he didn't run well too much? Or is is he, you know, is that something that you kind of look at and you say, yeah, I, I might take DeGene over Mitchell or uh, DeGene and Mitchell over Arnold? Well, I, I'm interesting. I, I'm, if, if it's me today, DeGene is kind of in a, a bucket of his own where I need to see those exact right. numbers before I make a call because Quinion Mitchell is my clear CB1. I just I love he's checked every yeah. box. Like the the concern was who he played against, right? And he was dominant at the FB, FBS level. No one has forced more incompletions over the past two seasons, thanks to PFF for that stat. But just dominant, and that's what you want, right? Well, then he goes to the Senior Bowl, and he shows he can play press coverage at a high level against NFL players, future NFL players, and impressed there. And then he went to the combine ran a 4-3-3 and did everything that that he's done. And so I think Quinion Mitchell's number one. But Terry and Arnold's a 1A for me. Mm. I think Terry and Arnold, he's 21 years old. He's got the, the coverage skills that you're looking for. His size is right there. You're right. He didn't run a 4-3. Okay. Uh, you, you can get by with that. He still has good enough speed. And so I, I think he's athletic enough. He's got the quickness, all of those things to be a high level corner. And then you mentioned both Alabama guys. I think Kool-Aid is being overlooked a bit mm. and might be that that guy that gets picked end of round 1, early round 2 and in a few years we're like, "Why why was he there? Why did the Titans get him at pick 38? Or why did the Patriots get him in round 2 after adding their quarterback of the future in round 1? Like how did that work? And now they have Kool-Aid and Christian Gonzalez yeah. Just throwing out scenarios there, but I, I do think that he's a, a stud. He's also number one on the all name team. So you got to give him some love too. <laughs> Absolutely. I think there's a, there's a lot of interesting factors that you look at this cornerback class and where you want guys to go and you know who what's what's your priority there, and especially in an in, in, in NFL where there's things changing. And like like you said, this is also a deep class. Like if you yeah. go past the first rounders, you know, guys like I, I really like Rake Straw out of, out of Missouri. You know, Mike Sandra still might be a really interesting slot option for a lot of people. Uh Kamari Lasseter out of Georgia, one of my favorite guys in this draft class as far as the value that you could get if you wait long enough is Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon. I love his length and his ability to play. His speed doesn't 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 track in the in the combine, but I think that's something that he, that his tape will overcome when people look at it and even later guys like Jerry and Jones out of Florida State that you can that you wait on and get later another slot option there. There's just a lot of talent that comes in the secondary and I, I think it's part of what happens in today's football. A lot of guys, you know, with the with the increased amount of passing, you see not just a lot of talent there, but you see a lot of experience because these guys are asked to do so much more and it allows them to transition better into the NFL because they're facing so many different guys and taking on that responsibility against, you know, also really talented wide receivers in college. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I think the receiver talent has gone up. And so the cornerback talent, guess what it has to do? It has to go up. We're going to get to the offensive line coming up in a bit in this year's class. There's a lot of great athletes. Why? Well, you better be a great athlete if you're going to block some of these pass rushers that, that have come into the, the NFL and have developed. And it, it's kind of crazy to think about how athletic some of these pass rushers are. Same thing with these receivers. Well, the cornerbacks have to uh, adjust as well. A guy that has Pittsburgh Steeler right, written all over him, Mike Sanistro from Michigan. I, I can totally see that happening. Uh, hopefully it doesn't because he's, he's like Mike Hilton, the 2.0, like the young version. I, I like and, that. Uh, I so, the same uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see if that happens. But uh, let's continue the conversation on maybe some corners, but certainly some other pre-draft narratives coming up next. 
But first, we we'll remind you this show is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. That's why Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They give you killer deals on last minute tickets and give you a best price guarantee that can't be beat so you can stop stressing over the ticket th- that you're about to get and start getting hyped for the fun that you're about to have. Download the Game Time app today or go to their website, gametime.co. And when you do, you can see that you can book tickets even up to an hour after your event has started. It, all, all it depends on is you're just trying to find the right price. price. And Game Time gives you the best of both worlds you'll get the right prices the best prices out there but you'll also be able to see through the app what kind of seats you're getting seeing the view from your seats you know hey i'm not getting scammed with with, with where these are these are actually great seats that are also for a great value and again they come with the best price guarantee that can't be beat because if you find tickets in the same section and row for less somewhere else game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference of the prices that you got from them with their tickets so snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game to matt create an account and use code locked on for 20 dollars off your first purchase or go to their website gametime.co term you to supply create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off, download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Let's keep things rolling on a Wednesday edition of Locked On NFL. And Chris, a- anything else on corner before we get to some of these narratives? Uh, I'll say this, Max Melton out of Rutgers. I like mm-hmm. him a lot. He's someone that stands out. Uh, Jarvis Brownlee Jr. out of Louisville. And then one more, you talk about size, Cam Hart. From yes. Notre Dame. I, I like I like taking Ooh. him as like a flyer in the fourth. And that yes. way, like, 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 like kind of where like the Bills took Darius Rush last year. And it didn't work out for the Bills. He's, he came to the Steelers eventually. But like the idea of like, hey, if this don't work out, fine. But if it does work out, ooh, that would be so great with the measurables that that guy has. Yeah. And I, I, there are so many times when we do this, and I'm just mentioning it now, where, we don't know about character. We don't know about medicals. We don't know about a lot of that stuff that these these teams are obviously judging as well. But looking at a guy like Cam Hart, and I'm not saying anything about his character. I'm just in general with all of these prospects that we're talking about. When there are fallers, sometimes it's things that we just don't know about and, we, and things we don't see. With a guy like Cam Hart, the reason I think he could go earlier than that is people just fall in love with his traits. Yep. And it's the things that we can see. Where it's like, oh my goodness, like he's got the size, he's got the work mm-hmm. ethic, he's mm-hmm. he might not have done it in college consistently, but man, can we develop him into this lockdown guy? Like, I wouldn't shock me if he snuck into day two. It really would, just because of those measurables. Like I said, mm-hmm. six two 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 hundred plus. I hear you on that enti- entirely. I think it, it's going to be interesting to see w- who are the rises of because every year that happens too, right? Like like oh, Corey no, Trice no. was a guy that the Steelers drafted in the seventh round. They're, like Matt Miller and guys at ESPN were like that guy should have been in the third round. I don't know what yes. we're looking at. So like, how's he doing just, by the way? Because he he tested he, out of his mind. Yeah, he tested out of his mind, but he tore his ACL in preseason, uh-huh. and that that led to him not playing at all this past year. But from what I've heard, he's been he's been rehabbing pretty well, and they're they're excited to see him get out get back on the practice field this this spring when OTAs get back out there. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because he was someone that you looked mm-hmm. at his relative athletic score, which is such a huge sh- shout out to Kentley Platt. It's such a huge tool now and resource it to is. use and it look is. at. You look for the green. Are they green or are they not? And if they're green, <laughs> and, and there was a lot of green on Corey Trice. Uh, speaking of green, uh, some guys that are going to make a lot of green are the the receivers in this draft class, specifically at the top of the class. Do you buy that? It, and I, I've heard the the comparison of Julio Jones, AJ Green, way back in 2011. How good is the top of this receiver class, this trio of guys? Do you remember a draft that was like this? And if so, is it is it 2011 where it was two guys or another year that stands out? It's, it's always tough for me to compare draft years because, like, I, I meshed so many years together. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I'd say that, you, like, yeah, if you're comparing it to, like, the Julio Jones type of draft, like, like Marvin Harris Jr. and Malik Neighbors are a 1A, 1B, where, like, if you, you land either one, you're really – uh, you're you're really, you know, excited about that, and that's that's where I think that you're like you're like okay, like that's a that's a top of the year type thing. Um, you know, I'm I'm trying to think back to other years where like receivers have been ranked really so, high. Um, so 2014, mm-hmm. Sammy Watkins went, which obviously didn't work out for Buffalo, yeah. but then Mike Evans and Odell Beckham Jr. go at pick seven and pick twelve. 
and then Brandon Cooks picked 20. So you're talking about three. What about your boy? 2021, Chase at five, Waddle at six, Devontae Smith at 10. That's another great year. Great. That might be a year I compare it to because you look at. Who would you take? Which trio would you rather have right now? Dirty dog, why'd you put me in that spot? Right there we there, go. Right, you now. just backed yourself in the court. I did. I totally did. I set myself up for failure. Um, but uh, uh, right now it's just it's tough because I love Chase. I love Waddle, and I think Devonte Smith is emerging really well for the Eagles. But if I let's talk take- this out, Chase or Harris? First off, Harrison or Neighbors? For you, I, I take Harrison over Neighbors. Okay, so Chase or Harrison? I hate you because I, I love both of these players. I, I'm going to call Jamar and tell him that you're not taking him if you don't. I, I, tell Jamar <laughs> I'm thinking about it, all right? Tell him, Jamar, like, like, all right, like, you know, hey, um, you know, like, you know, I, hey, you know what? Marvin Harrison Jr. has never been swept by the Pittsburgh Steelers. So how about that? Uh, you know, wow. <laughs> so anyways, I mean, wow. it's tough to say coming out because also like Jamar Chase also played next to Jeff- Justin Jefferson and he had Joe Burrow in college. And so like for me, like that was high up there. And I just I feel like I would have taken Jamar. I take Jamar Chase, but I just it's one of those things where like it's tough for me to compare every year because there's so many different factors in college. So if I was to say right now, I would have taken Jam- I would have taken Jamar Chase in the 2021 over like Marvin Harrison Jr. now, but like at the same time, like I feel like that's flipping a coin where both sides get you a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? No, like, like no doubt. It's it, it, I agree. It's a win win. Now, and I agree with you. It would be Jamar, and it is close. Malik Neighbors or Jalen Waddle. I have Neighbors in this. I agree. I, I love Neighbors upside. Like I think he can be the top receiver. He he could end up being the top receiver in the NFL. I mean, hey, LSU guys, go 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 figure. Um, you know they just they just continue to stack. Uh, but um, but I, I think Nick Neighbors has the upside. Like he could he could end up being better than Marvin Harrison Jr. Is just if, if I'm drafting right now, I'm still taking Marvin Harrison Jr. I just think that he. I think he could still end up being the number one. I think he has a higher chance of being the number one guy in this class. But Malik Neighbors, I, I think that he – like Jalen Waddle is really good and awesome at what he does. But I think Malik Neighbors can be close. He has a better chance of becoming Jamar Chase than he do, than I think that uh, than Jalen Waddle has of sure. reaching that height in his career. Of reaching the Tyreek Hill level because yes. he's not Tyreek. Right. Um, it, okay, so it's one to one between the classes, and then it's Devontae Smith or Roma Dunze. Now that's the thing here is that it's the time. I really break. like I really like Devontae Smith, but I love Rome. I, I think that I think that might take the cake there. I like Adunze. I think the way that he goes up and gets the ball, he's physical, he's able to he's able to fight for I saw him, I just saw him just make go up and go get so many tough passes this year and, and make some really big plays. Uh, so I, if I guess by nature of just two to one. I guess I would take – or no, wait. What did I say? I said – No, you, you you said 2020 you, – this year. Yeah, okay. Then I guess by the nature of that, I would take this year's this year's group just based and, off of the three versus the three. And I get I, I get it because you're right. I it, As much as that 21 one class was awesome, and I thought Jalen Waddle was awesome, mm-hmm. and he's been really good. Devontae Smith, obviously, Heisman, and has been good and has stayed healthy and been productive. I get it. But and Jamar is obviously Jamar, and yes, we both put him number one out of all of them. But Marvin Harris, it, it's it's number one, J- Jamar, and that's debatable. Yes, and then the next three might be the twenty twenty four class. It I might literally it might be. be Marvin Neighbors Adunze, then Waddle, then, then Smith. Smith. Yeah, and, and I think that's probably fair. And by the way, would it shock you if Adunze? five years from now is the best receiver in this class it wouldn't shock me it wouldn't shock me no that, that, that's how talented the, the the top end of this wide receiver draft class is and the crazy thing is this is not a top heavy class like there are guys who are going to be drafted later in the first round brian thomas jr uh, adonai mm-hmm. mitchell lad mcconkey you know who i think all of them stand a good chance to being premier number one guys in the NFL, which is why this this year's wide receiver class is so talented. And I, I think, you know, puts itself in the chance to be the best wide receiver class of all time. And that's Woo! another one. Like, I, I, let's, I'm saying Woo! it's in the potential range of that. Like, you look Woo! at the talent that's here. And- oh, man. You just went. You think Lab McConkey can be a number one? 
I think he can be. I think that I think that it just depends on can he do it all. Can he end up doing it all? He's a smaller bodied receiver. I know some people don't go for that, but like being overwhelming with size in the NFL is becoming less and less important in today's passing game. Like if if you're just that much of an elite route runner and you just consistently get open and your hands are great and you get with the right quarterback, you can be deadly in the NFL. And the that's where thing, what I just heard you say, sorry to cut you off, was they're good. If he ends up in Saint, or if he ends up with the Rams, he's gonna be. What? Why'd you say that like that? If he ends up with the Rams, he's gonna be a number one. That's. What I didn't say he was gonna end up with the Rams. I just said he's gonna replace Cooper Cup. Look at you. I didn't I know say what that. Saying. What? Oh what? Did, no. What are you putting in my mind? No, don't you start that with me, sir. I left a whole segment of Cooper DeJean on the table for you to talk about. Talk about that. Don't you start that with me, Mister Rapine. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Get out of here. He said, he said, try to replace Cooper Cup. I didn't say he brings his lunch pail to work. I didn't say all of those things. You're trying to put Cooper to Dean versus Lad McConkey up next. <laughs> oh my God. The sports calendar is loaded and Fandles making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Whether it's the tournament men or women's tournament and both have been must watch or maybe you're looking at nfl mlb nhl and when i mentioned nfl like nfl drafted futures yeah fanduel has them and right now new customers get 200 dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet so it doesn't matter if you're wagering on caitlin clark if it doesn't matter if you're wagering on the yukon huskies both of them since they're in the final four nc state both of them since they're in the final four Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, and so much more in one place, FanDuel. And right now, go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win by getting 200 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, back to the uh, draft talk that we have here before James Rapine tries to corner me into narratives and stuff. I want to ask this of you. All right, um, buy or sell. More offensive tackles get drafted in the first round than wide receivers. Buy. Oh, buy. buy. Okay, okay. Buy, buy, buy. We talk about how strong this wide receiver class is, but the yeah. OT class is also pretty tough. It is. I mean, so you, you have Fatanu, Fawaga. Now, hold on. I guess... I buy it, but is is Fatanu considered a guard by some? Is mm. Graham Barton considered a guard? I, I guess that could be the other element. Now, if you say offensive linemen versus wide receivers, it's not it's not really a debate. And I don't think it changes a ton. I don't think there are a ton of like Jackson Powers Johnson may go round one. I don't think the NFL is as high on him mm. as everyone else. Uh, I, I think Graham Barton might be the number one interior lineman in this draft. And then after that, it's probably just a bunch of tackles in round one. So, uh, no, I would still say tackle. I think it's close. W what's going to be interesting is after that first run of receivers, the top three, which we all – there's no debate. They're awesome. When does A.D. Mitchell get picked? When does Brian Thomas Jr. go off the board? Is it 13 or is it 23? And, because that wave, when that happens, then the Lad McConkeys of the world. Yeah. Then the the Xavier Worthies of the world, uh, Troy Franklin is obviously in that mix. In, in, Ricky Persaud, like I, I wonder where those guys get stacked up, how they get stacked up. Xavier Leggett, and, and so do we have a bunch of guys that sneak into the back end around one at receiver, or do they fall because Brian Thomas Jr. and, and Ad Mitchell fall to the the mid twenties mm. or, or the twenties instead of going twelve? let's say, and I don't think the Broncos are taking a receiver, but who knows, maybe they trade and the team that they trade with takes one. I, I think that that's, that's always the, 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 the key here is when does, when does a certain group start to run? Because one player getting picked can often start to determine who else gets picked right after them because then people see, people start to panic like, oh, we, we can't miss on this guy, you know, or, or, or trades start to happen because they're worried that another team is like, okay, well, th this we know this team really needs a wide receiver and there's only like two of those guys left, so we need to get ahead of them to get this guy. And so uh, that, like, that stuff can always play. That's the stuff that's so tough to predict and why draft season is so exciting to discuss. But that's why I brought this up because tackle, and you're right, there's some players that, you know, 
are they could they may be listed by some as tackles, but they may also be you know guards. Some even look at Burton as a potential set center. But um, I, I just I look at I look at this year's class, and I just I think that man, the guys that tackle are so athletic. Uh, you know when it when it comes to being able to either dominate the run, it, it's crazy because Olu Fashanu was looked at out of Penn State was looked at as a surefire, like the number two tackle going into the, like the early parts of the draft process between, you know, after Joe Alt. Um, but now you got guys like Fuwaga, guys like Fatanu who jumped ahead of him. And now Fashano's look, you know, if, if you look at just, you know, different big boards, he's starting to drop down close to the twenties. And that's where I think it could be really interesting for guys like him, Latham and Mims. Where do they go? And, and how early do they get picked? Because we also know there's a premium on tackles, and teams always know, like, hey, we got to protect our our superstar quarterback if we got him. And um, those that position is just as valuable, if not more valuable, than wide receiver, depending on the construction of your roster right now. Like the Bengals right now, Bengals could use more offensive line help, and the, and it's it's very it's vital to making sure that that, that Joe Burrow sta- stands upright. I know they went and got uh, Trent Brown recently, but still, if if you if you have a chance and you think that a guy is a franchise left tackle or even a dominant right tackle like mm-hmm. th- those are extremely valuable and that's why i think those could be two positions that go on runs and frankly james we're talking about a run at quarterback a run at wide receiver a run at tackle we talked about corners to start the there's, there's too many positions to have runs on in the first round that's gonna lead to some of these top tier guys that we're talking about slipping to the back end of the first round and being complete steals for teams no doubt the there's going to be a period and it's right after the first round ends and there's like 16 hours until the second round starts. It, you saw this last year because it was, yep. oh, is Pittsburgh going to trade? Is Pittsburgh mm-hmm. going to trade? Oh, no, no mm-hmm. they, they did not trade. And, and they got it right, it looks like. And so that's what's going to happen this year. I think they're going to be more – it's not going to be, oh, well, Porter Jr. is here. And, and will the Pittsburgh Steelers take him or will they move back? No, it's going to be like there's eight guys here. Who gets picked because there's just too many. And even if NFL teams feel differently than the the big boards that are out there and it's much different, fine. I still think there are going to be guys, stars, potential stars at least, that are there that we're surprised are there. Does Kool-Aid McKinstry fall out of round one? Or does uh, one of these other players that we just kind of pencil into round one? Heck, does Nate Wiggins, because he's so light, under 180, does he fall out of round one? wouldn't shock me could happen yeah i i think that that's where you're gonna find the guys like again like you said joey porter jr last year many people saw him as like maybe the number two number three corner in the class and he fell all the way to 32 uh and, and the steelers are like we'll take that problem on our hands uh you know and now he's you know he's a guy that look projects to be their number one corner for some time unless they go and get like a quinian mitchell or maybe even a cooper de this year in the draft but you know i think that's where things could get interesting here on the buy sell of like which positions go on the first run. Um, you know, so let's do it this way. If you had to pick a position between corner, receiver, or tackle, which will be the position that gets drafted the least in the first round this year and ends up being the position that's highly valued in, in the top of the second round? Oh. I, I think there'll be more corners available still. Interesting. That, that'll be the one that you're like, man, there's a lot of cornerbacks. And then there's a cornerback run that happens in round two. Round two, round three. And so, yeah, if I had – because I do think there are, there are a lot of guys there. We talked about some of them. That would be the one. What about you? What do you think? I tend to agree on corner simply because I think that there's going to be a lot of teams that go after the wide receiver class this year. And I think there's going to be a lot of teams that go after the the, the tack. Just looking at different needs across the board, I, I think that teams – are going to see a premium at the higher picks in those positions versus the higher picks in corners. I think that there are there's a closer gap or a smaller gap between that second group of corners and that third group of corners and the second group of wide receivers and the third group of wide receivers. And so because of that, I think that there's going to be there's going to be a little bit more patience at, at some of the corners at the back end of the first round than there will be at some of these other positions where I think that some people are like, Hey, if we don't, if we miss this boat, we're, we're not getting the number one wide receiver. We want to get in this draft and the number two wide receiver. We want to get in this draft or the number one or the starting left tackle. We want to get in this draft. Whereas like at corner, I could see some teams being like, ah, you know, we'd really like this guy, but 
we also don't want to miss the boat over here. And, and if no we miss on this guy, guess what? Yep. There's Rick Straw, Sandra there's still there's so many other guys that we would be very happy to add to our team that would make our secondary really good, really tough next year. Yeah, I think that's that's why JC Latham could go top 10. That's why yeah. uh, Olu yeah. Fashanu, that's why these guys could go much earlier than we realize. Mm -hmm. And it's because, heck, are we sure Joe Walt is the number one offensive lineman on everyone's board? I don't Ooh. know that. I think Ooh. he probably is, but I don't know that. And by the way, if he is, does he go five? Does a team trade up and take Tough. a quarterback and then all fall? Like I, I think we could see the offensive lineman go really quickly and compact over like five picks. And you're like, wait, what the hell just happened? So <laughs> it is, uh, we're, it's draft month. We're just a few weeks away and I can't wait. Absolutely. We'll keep you up to date here on the Locked On NFL podcast of all things on the NFL draft. I'm Chris Carter. He's James Rapine. Find this show every, all, all throughout your week, Monday through Friday, talking all things about the NFL on the Locked On NFL podcast on your favorite podcasting app. <laughs> And on YouTube, we're back. We're back later. We're back late, late next week on Wednesday, talking all things here on the Locked On NFL podcast.